this is how I got into business. We'll start at the beginning. When I was a kid, we were really, really, really poor. There was a lot of scarcity. And I had all of these desires and wants. I remember waking up shivering one morning because we had ran out of gas. And I remember my childhood being a state of perpetual lack. Uh, couldn't go out for things, couldn't do the band because my mother didn't have the money. And I always said that I wasn't going to live like that as an adult. And that planted the seeds for business ownership in my mind. I um, looked at all the people who were living like I thought I wanted to live, and they were all business owners. I went through a lot of struggles as a kid. Remember the J.C. Penney and Sears and Roebuck big catalogs? We used to get those catalogs because they would ship them in the mail and I used to write down all the stuff that I wanted. And it never happened because I was in an environment that did not support my ambition. I was in an environment that did not support my hustle. I was uh, the son of a single mother. I remember I wasn't being challenged in school, so I got a job and enrolled myself in private school. And my mother and I had beef because she wanted access to my money. Because it was a pretty good job at the time. It was six fifty dollars an hour. And that was, you know, she, she wasn't there, you know, going back to environment. The environment wasn't supportive. So with that, my next move was the military, where I got a lot of love and I learned a lot of things, got to go to some foreign countries. Then the military brought me to Atlanta, where shortly after I arrived here, I tried to start a business. And you know, in military regulations, you're not supposed to have a business, you're not supposed to have a part-time job. I broke both of those. But I, my first thing was a picture with a pooch. I took an ad in the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, my newfound credit, because uh, I had bought a car when I was in Hawaii, so my credit profile was pretty good. I got sixteen. I got like a twenty-five hundred dollar account limit at Wolf Camera and bought the camera. Had a phone installed in my room and ran the newspaper ad. Then that didn't work. Then I tried to sell stuff out of a catalog. I actually sold a lot of stuff, didn't make any money. Then I tried to do a Janet King franchise. That was horrible. Then I tried to sell some stuff for this guy I had met. That was horrible. And then I sent away for this course in the back of a magazine that was just worthless and garbage. So where I was at that point, I, I had all of this desire that I wanted to start a business. And I didn't have any clue how to do it. I didn't have anyone to talk to. I didn't have any mentors. There was like just me and all of my desires and wants because, you know, I wanted some nice stuff. I wanted to live a different life. I realize now that I had high intellect, high drive, but my resource and pure base was non-existent. I didn't have the skill sets, you know, I, I just, I was operating in an environment that I could not succeed. And I think many of you are in that space because you, you, you have ambition, you, you want to do more, you want to make more money. but. Where do I start is the question. Where do I invest my time and my energy and money? Where do I start? And that was the place I was in because I was going from thing to thing to thing to thing. And I didn't realize that I was missing some foundational skills. And this is one of the things I really, really want to drive home. You cannot ignore foundational skills. Bobby Hurley for Duke, he was fundamentally sound and it showed. So I was out there trying to just willpower stuff and I didn't have a plan, I didn't have a system. 
and I would listen to all of this stuff. Then I got married. Then we divorced. I ended up homeless and I lived in that boarding house. And oddly enough, the boarding house was the place that I learned how to think because I had time to think. Walking to the Marta station, waiting for the bus. I had a lot of time to think that I didn't have before because I was a married man working three jobs. I was always at work. I was always tired. And that's where I was. And I, it was a pivotal moment when I got laid off because I found Earl Nightingale, Anthony Robbins, uh, Brian Tracy, and all of their teachings were, were in my mind. That was my mini university. That's where I learned how to think and conceptualize, which was, was missing when I was in the military. You know, I was just acting, I was doing stuff, but I wasn't thinking, I wasn't conceptualizing. So when he laid me off, I said, I figured out, I went home and I came up with Scheme Incorporated. I had a written plan on how to do this. And I executed and it worked out and I got the job at Renecrate, which was my first step into my education. Uh, Renecrate, I learned how to do a sales process. They taught me from beginning how to sell stuff. Invaluable lessons I learned there, which I took to my next job, which I took to my third job. And my third job was the setup for the business. Because like, how did I get here? And what are the steps to get here? And what are the steps to get here in the fastest possible way? And once again, you need more of the right information, not just more information, but more of the right information. And I was working for these people, so they had a vested interest in training me to make them money. So we had a mutual need. I needed a check, they needed sales. One of the things that is pivotal is you've got to seek out your information with a thirst that is crazy and that's where i was i was just a sponge i was soaking it all up uh, meeting new people meeting fancy people having access to the company van it was all wow then after that through those companies i learned the things especially the last company i learned how to set up and run a business With JDA, I set up my first LLC, then I started getting paid through my LLC, through her business environments. And one of the things that I took to the storage auction business was systems and processes. And that's why I was able to shortly begin to tangle with the big dogs. Because some of these people had been out there for years, they had jackpot units, and I was a new kid on the block. And they were like, who is this guy? So I brought systems, processes to the storage auction game. And I loved that, you know, we were making money. It was very successful. Then I got sick. And once the th one of the things I should tell you is never be idle. Because even though I was sick, I was sitting there like, what can I do to recover? So I thought about writing and then the whole gambit of going out to write this this book about relationships and then halfway through I, I quit it because I didn't want to be the relationship book dude. Then I wrote the storage auction book and that changed my life. But going back to that process, running a business and doing all of those Craigslist ads to sell stuff, because this is something I used to do every day. I used to write Craigslist ads every day. I, I tried to make them funny. I put a lot of work in there and I didn't, unbeknownst to me, I was, the, I was developing a writing discipline. I was developing a level of discipline. And when I wrote my first book, it was an educational tune. And you know, when, when I came to YouTube, it was none but love. It was none but love. It was all love. 
you know, people would have me on their shows and stuff. And then I began to speak too much. And when people found out how much money I had made and I was making, this is when the jealousy came in. And this is when I had people starting uh, new YouTube channels to harass people who left positive comments or they would attack people. Because essentially, you know, there was a lot of jealousy because when people don't have what you have and they, they can't figure out how you got what you have, that's when the hate can begin. And men are not men like they used to be. A man used to be like, well, he's better than me. What can I do to be better? Those questions aren't asked. The questions are, how can I destroy this? Uh, currently, I have a jackrabbit who has a video of me, you know, uh, slandering my name. But due to all of the hard work and the positive energy I put out, it didn't work. Because many people were actually wanted to come. It's like, Glenn is right. Glenn is right. And part of this is... I've been on YouTube for 10 years and I've been honest with you guys. Like if it's something that's a bad deal and I'm going to tell you why I don't think entrepreneurs, emerging entrepreneurs who are trying to build a business should even dick around with Bitcoin. It's a massive distraction. Uh, there's this a guy I'm dealing with on Facebook who has a business, but he's so knee deep in Bitcoin that his business is suffering because, you know, he's like, He's, 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 he's investing more money in the Bitcoin than he did in his business. And a big part of that is people want that life. And everybody's trying to get that life the best way they can. You know, you have a lot of poor people out here who want to start a business. Just don't know where to start. Don't know who to ask. And most of these folks are in a scarcity mindset because they like see if I spend X amount of dollars and it doesn't work out I lost money I spent thousands of dollars and I got an education so I don't see it as not working out but one of the things that you should understand is because um, I came to a point where I was gonna quit YouTube and I did the Ben Franklin method. I, I took a sheet of paper, I drew a T-bar graph, and I wrote the pros and cons. And the pros were, you know, this is fun, you're making money, you're changing lives. The cons was the haters. And I was like, that's just it. That was the one con of it. And at that point, I said, I'm on the fight. So I actually went after people. I started suing people. And it was an interesting 18 months. I got them off of me. Because one thing with the internet, and this is a big problem in the manosphere, there's a lot of jealousy. Everybody wants to be the man, but few people want to be a leader of men. Few people want to lead because right now, this is this jackrabbit who's got this stuff up. You know, he, he's got my mug shot up. And that's the first sign that someone feels some kind of way about me. Typically, when they find the mugshot, which says failure to appear, I would pay anyone $100,000 that can prove I have a prison record. Because I don't. Never been to prison. Essentially, that occurred because the business license in Stone Mountain, we had moved out two years ago, and they put out a failure to appear warrant for me not renewing my business license. That's how I ended up in jail. And I, I remember the day in court and the judge was like, why are you here? I was like, I don't know. And then the code enforcement dude is like, well, he didn't renew his business license. And I was like, we moved two years ago. Should have sued him. Because that was, uh, you know, because if you've been to Stone Mountain, you could tell that we weren't in that space. But I look at people who use that and they all just go out and get the mugshot, but they don't ever say anything. It's like, so you got a mugshot. And it's funny, because there are white guys here and there that who've been to prison who don't get that kind of stuff. It's usually people who have never been successful in their life trying to tear someone down the easiest way they can. But typically, one of the things 
that you should understand. And also, when you have this negativity going on and you're, you're an internet marketer, put out as much content as you can. Because I've had people go that tactic before, but I've got a lot of you guys who love me, who buy the products, who love the information, who've literally had their lives transformed. Because the information I'm giving you is what I went through in that arc of becoming a business owner. How did I get here? Those lessons are the pathways to where I am today. And if you're a person who wants to start a business, you should ask yourself, who can I serve? Now, how much money you can make? Because that's where things get twisted. When you focus on the money and you don't focus on the service and the customers, you're going to lose. So you, it's like, who can I serve? And you should ask yourself as a new business owner, how many people are in my market? How many people are in this audience? And your second question, is this audience growing or shrinking? There have been people who have started businesses for a shrinking market and wondered why they went out of business. So part of this journey in being on YouTube and going through these changes is a lesson because the content here is going to change a little bit. We're going to be talking more about the process because you've got to focus. Just because you have a website and an Instagram account, that does not make you a business owner. You can call yourself a business owner, but until you get money crossing the palm, you ain't doing nothing. And a big part of being your proctor and talking about my life is to give you information to fill in these gaps because this is typically where a lot of people are. I want to start a business, but how? Just Jess did this thing talking about, you know, she knew someone with a business owner and she wanted this person to give her step by step what they did. I'm here to tell you there are many successful people that could not write down a journal of what they did to be successful. They just did what they did. They don't know the steps. They, they didn't take inventory of what worked and what didn't. They just did it. And they could not. Like the, the big thing like YouTubers, like how to be successful on YouTubers. These girls who are like pretty with double D's are talking about just upload and make sure you, you're friendly and everything and that has nothing to do with their success. This is why I would never follow a pretty woman's advice on how to have an Instagram account because uh, many of them just post pictures of themselves and they grow like weeds because they're pretty and people like looking at them. But what I'm here to tell you about this thing called business, it's more about who you serve. You know, I've made some acts of service. I made a mistake by giving away the 19 courses. That was a mistake because I got a bunch of people who would not take action. 95% of the people who got those courses did not crack open the one. They just downloaded them because they were free. And they, they're tired of me emailing them because every day I send out an email. Hey, I ain't interested in this. I don't want to be successful. You want to become part of that 5% of the population that goes for it. There's a reason there's only 2,500 billionaires. There's a reason there's only like 20 million millionaires around the world. Most people don't want to do the work because if you look and go back through my story, there's one thing that's a constant theme, a lot of work. And there are many people who feel that they can get rich and have a work-life balance. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Uh, there are some people who can, most folks can't. Most folks are gonna have to sell out on their business, do what they need to do, work fanatical amounts of hours to really get this thing going because it's getting harder to break out on the internet because there's so much noise. It's hard to break out on Instagram. It's hard to break out on YouTube. It's hard to break out on Facebook. So you got to put in work. And that's one of the consistent themes I'm telling you. You, you got to put in the work. Uh, like the people who buy, who watch my video, how to find gold and stuff at garage sales. It is a tutorial. Step by step, what you need to do, you need to say. And everyone who's actually listened to the video and went out and took action made money. 
everyone has made money. I get these thank you notes all of the time. And so it isn't that the information isn't good. The information is rock solid. The question is, who is going to use the information? And that's the 5%. I've got people who watch this channel whose lives have been transformed because of the blatant honesty and the forthrightness. And we're going to continue to do more of this. So what I want you guys to do is go below and these lessons that I've learned, because essentially, if you don't have any money, you have a skill set problem. You don't have a money problem. Money is everywhere. Money is everywhere. Everybody, if I, I tap on you, everybody's got some money in their pocket or a credit card or access to funds. Money, money ain't the problem. The problem is having the skill sets to access the money. And the greater your skill sets and the greater your focus, the easier you can access that money. It's just that simple. Because, you know, money's a byproduct of service. So bring your service way up and you should see your money go up. So go below, get the courses. It's a blueprint on what I went through. And a big part of that is mindset. Go below, get the free audio book, and then buy the courses. Whether you know the courses are appropriately priced, you, you can be making minimum wage and you can afford these courses. And get busy. One of the things I have to tell you is you got to get busy. You got to put in the work. You've got to focus. You got to come off of Facebook. You 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 really really need to get busy. And once again, you know, below are some courses to help you figure some stuff out. Because if you're in that space where I was all of those years ago, like, how should I do this? What should I do? Those are big big questions. And until you start focusing on them, you're not going to do anything, and you're wasting time. There are many of you who've been watching this channel for two or three years, want to start a business. You haven't taken the first step. You're wasting time. And we know time is money. So with that, I'll see you guys later. Go below, get your free book, and get the courses.